okay we are going to start our lecture soon uh, i am handing some of the participant very good morning okay uh, you can reply in chat box there is a chat box below your uh, youtube live chat it is written as live chat you can write down in live chat is my voice clear and audible is my voice clear and audible write down in chat box is my voice clear and audible write down in chat box okay good morning chirag neel all are online good morning ishita please write down in chat box is my voice clear and audible okay so i am getting reply from so many students okay okay fine so we will be discussing today on uh, one of the communicable diseases that is malaria uh, you must have heard about this uh, is it been taken previously in your class is this topic has been taken previously in your class malaria has been taken please write down in chat box is malaria been taken in your class is it taken? so uh, if it even if it is taken we are going to see again as a repetition or uh, okay right please reply me what are the communicable disease that has been taken in your class what communicable disease that has been taken in your class please reply in chat box what communicable communicable disease that you have learned until today in your class which are the communicable disease that you have learned until today in your class write down in chat box which communicable disease that you have learned until now in your class write down in chat box which communicable disease that you have learned i am waiting for your reply till now we will be talking on malaria write down in chat box which communicable disease that you have learned so malaria it is vector borne disease as you know it and vector vector is defined as an arthropod here the mosquito is arthropod or any living carrier that transport an infectious agent to susceptible individual so susceptible individual here are all human being and vector is mosquito so that is an arthropod that is an arthropod or any living carrier see in case of the disease like cholera typhoid uh, polio housefly can be also a vector so housefly this mosquito these are considered as the vector that can transmit infection to any susceptible individual uh, apart from this biological vector vector can be mechanical also so vectors are of two type or transmission transmission is of two type mechanical transmission and biological transmission so transmission through mosquito or house fly and transmission of any disease through mosquito or house fly is considered as the biological vector sand fly is also one of the example of biological vector can you tell me how mechanical transmission of the disease can occur how mechanical transmission of disease can occur can you tell me write down in chat box how mechanical transmission of the disease apart from this biological vector how mechanical transmission of the disease can occur write down in chat box how mechanical transmission of disease can occur write down in chat box i am looking for your answer mechanical transmission how cholera can be transmitted mechanically or how typhoid can be transmitted mechanically so i will be waiting for this reply also uh, two questions are pending which communicable disease you have learned until now write down in chat box which communicable disease you have learned and second question is what is mechanical transmission how mechanical transmission of the disease can occur we are moving further in malaria i am not getting any reply apart from good morning okay okay shake hand yes very nice i am getting reply from pruthi by shaking hand that is mechanical transmission so fingers uh, 
okay blood transmission okay uh, so fingers our hands that can work as a mode of mechanical transmission so we are moving further in malaria see here i can change the options like this you can okay now you can clearly read the slide also so by vector intervertebrate type and vertebrate type invertebrate type and vertebrate type of the animal so this mosquito house fly this considered as the invertebrate type of the animal who can transmit the disease vertebrate type like dogs dogs transmit which this is commonly which disease is transmitted by dog in which disease is transmitted by dog that down in chat box which disease is transmitted by dog which disease is transmitted by dog write down in chat box see still so many students uh, are left behind now uh, 51 students are online so uh, make okay ravi is i am getting the answer ravi is very nice so please uh, write down in whatsapp that our lecture is live so that all should join okay still so many students are left okay 52 uh, participants are online okay so we are going further so by transmission chain main non vertebrate host malaria cystosomiasis see our mcq today i will going to give you one google form uh, i will write down in uh, whenever this design i will write down in our group and uh, based, you have to answer question mcq in this google form and this questions will be based on today's lecture as well as i have previously uh, uploaded a lecture on anti malarial month activity as well as prevention of malaria this mosquito borne disease prevention of mosquito borne disease so the mcq will be there will be only 10 mcq this will be based on these two lectures previous lecture mosquito control measures as well as and today's class whatever up to whatever part we will uh, study up to that i will design mcq and i will uh, give you through google link so main non vertebrate host here uh, malaria and cystosomiasis mosquito is non vertebrate host main vertebrate host and non vertebrate host this cycle is uh, example of plague okay so here in plague vertebrate host is what that red encephalitis then uh, main and two intermediate host see uh, these are some of the example of some of the disease in which uh, two intermediate host are required like hystep worm okay that is common example you can remember then clonorchis so these are the common example in which hystep worm you can remember by method of which vector transmit the agent so how vector transmit the agent as you know that in case of the malaria mosquito bites us and as you know that female mosquito bite in case of the female mosquito female is the mosquito who always bite male mosquito never bite because female mosquito need blood for development of the eggs a male mosquito do not have to develop the egg female mosquito need blood uh, for nutrition for the development of the eggs and as you know that female mosquito lay down 100 around 150 eggs during their uh, egg laying period so by biting by regurgitation by scratching by scratching in in, uh, in case of the infective feces contamination of the host with body fluid vectors okay so most commonly here in case of the malaria method is, is by biting by method in which vector are involved in the transmission of the propagation of the parasite biological and mechanical transmission we have already talked about factors which influence ability of the vector to transmit the disease host feeding preference okay why this uh, vector transmit the disease uh, what are the factors which influence the ability of the vector to transmit the disease so first of all host feeding preference as i have already discussed that female mosquito always bite female mosquito need blood and they, this female mosquito they can uh, bite the human so feeding preference here in case of the mosquito human there are two word anthrophilic and zoophilic so whichever the mosquito bite human is considered as anthrophilic and the mosquito which bite at other animals it is known as zoophilic see some many of the mcq will be based on the speech which i uh, delivered right now 
so anthropelic and zoophilic it is not written over here but it can be asked in mcq also again i repeat anthropelic means the mosquito have the preference of biting the uh, human being and zoophilic means mosquito have the preference of biting animal then infectivity other factors which influence the transmission of this infectivity how infectivity is it mosquito is carrying out plasmodium parasite then and then they can uh, this uh, transmit malaria if mosquito is biting us but it, there is no plasmodium parasite inside the mosquito then it cannot transmit the disease same as in case of rabies uh, all dogs are not rabid as you know so even if there is a bite of the dog and if the dog is not rabid you cannot have rabid disease rabies disease susceptibility of the host then survival rate susceptibility talking about the susceptibility of the host uh, so in case of the rabies male are more susceptible because male are the person who are wandering in street jo bahar dekhte hai aap to usme aapko male hi dikhai dete hai to male are more susceptible for dog bite so susceptibility in case of the rabies is more towards male survival rate how much this uh, mosquito survive almost they can survive for one month we are talking about uh, currently passing through the phase of covid disease so here corona virus uh, there is different survival time as we have discussed previously over the different surface domesticity so uh, as you know that uh, rate of this dogs are domestic animal here in india and uh, this mosquito are also domestic arthropod here in india in many many countries dogs and rat are dogs rat as well as mosquito are not found so the in countries like us in countries like australia there cannot be malaria there can, uh, in australia there are uh, there is no rabies virus so there, this is rabies free so domesticity of the animal suitable environmental factors so these are the factors which uh, influence the infectivity of the host okay so now malaria the agent factor in men there are four agent plasmodia four plasmodia plasmodia vivax plasmodium falciparum plasmodium malari and plasmodium ovale so reservoir of the infection is human okay these are the agent factor as you know that in epidemiology we always study agent host and environment so agent here is plasmodium there are four species vivax malari falciparum and ovale and reservoir of the infection is human okay this is the life cycle of the plasmodium you can see that uh, there is mosquito bite then this must see uh, because of the mosquito side bite there is development of the plasmodium parasite see this is mosquito cycle this is mosquito cycle and this one is human cycle so in human there are phases said so after biting there is erythrocytic phase troposytic phase cytosomes in your liver there is maturation of this cytosomes okay this is mosquito cycle so period of communicability we will talk about period of communicability where uh, for how much duration mosquito can transmit the infection so as long as mature viable gametocytes exist in circulating blood in sufficient density to infect mosquito so for plasmodium falciparum relapse rate can be 1 to 2 years and for vivax and ovale it may be more than 3 years host factor we have talked about agent plasmodium uh, then this host factor okay so all ages all the persons are susceptible right? young age child child age old age all ages persons are susceptible male are more exposed to malaria male are more susceptible to get malaria then plus uh, as hemoglobin means the person who is suffering from australian antigen or hepatitis b they may pass plus falciparum resistance this person may not be having the infection plus falciparum resistance duffy negative rbc they are also vivax resistance so this person cannot have the plasmodium falciparum or plasmodium vivax infection in case of ashb that is australian hemoglobin and uh, that falciparum resistance and duffy negative rbc are vivax resistance intrauterine death can occur in case of the pregnancy if there is malaria during pregnancy it may there may be ch chances that there is intrauterine death low socio economic development country low socio economic class poverty poor hygiene these are all 
uh, the persons who are residing in low socioeconomic status, they are more susceptible. Poor housing, if there is population mobility, more population mobility, if any region is having malaria and that person moves to any region which is malaria free, there can be chances that this person may transmit infection to other through mosquito. Agriculture practices, uh, human rabies, such as in many uh, farms, there is breeding of the uh, plasmodium, the breeding of this mosquito. Like in case of the agriculture, if there is collection of the water, then mosquito uh, in large amount may breed into the water and because of the mosquito as you know that uh, there is always a sense of transmission of the disease. So host factor, we have already talked. Immunity, and uh, th there is repeated exposure. And there is no lifelong immunity against malaria, against dengue, against chikungunya. There is no lifelong immunity against any mosquito-borne disease. So repeated exposure of the mosquito, repeated mosquito bite can transmit repeated disease. Uh, there is development of the maternal antibody in infant, however. Environmental factor. So, which is the season during which uh, mosquito borne diseases are maximum? That is in post monsoon season. As you know, that uh, during monsoon, there is collection of the water in form of the ponds, in form of this uh, uh, all the collect water collection over the artificial sources. So, in these are the water collections over which uh, mosquito usually breed. As you know, that in clean water, uh, this Anopheles mosquito lay down egg in domestic and peridomestic water. This uh, Vivex, uh, this uh, Anopheles culex, culex mosquito can lay down the egg. And in case of the artificial collection of the water, Aedes mosquito lay down the egg. So during this monsoon and post monsoon season, this collection of the water bodies will be large. So, so season is around July to November. Optimum temperature for development of the mosquito 20 degree to 20 to 30 degree. Rainfall, as we have already discussed, that rainfall is the factor, environmental factor. Humidity, length of the time. So, humidity affect the length of life, length of survival of the mosquito. In case of the high humidity, there may not be a more life of the mosquito. Length of survival will decrease. Altitude, or it is believed that over high altitude, the mosquito density will be less and so there are less chances of the malaria. Suppose in case of the Himachal Pradesh, in case of the Jammu Kashmir, there may be because of the high altitude, low density of the mosquito and chances of getting mosquito borne disease will be less. Man-made, there is one terminology that there is man-made malaria. So uh, man, what is man-made malaria? That uh, uh, we are uh, because of our work, because of industry, because of uh, our construction work, there is also collection of the water because of, as yes, you know that uh, all over the city, in Rajput city, construction works are, works are going on. So there, uh, there is always chance of the collection of the water and this can serve as the uh, breeding, place of, breeding places for the mosquito. And so that is called as man-made malaria. So because of the urbanization, because of the urbanization, urbanization is one of the factors which can lead to man-made malaria. So vector of the malaria, that is the picture of mosquito, as you know, that is female Anopheles mosquito. 45 species are existing in the world. There are 45 species. See, this is very important. Uh, Anopheles culicifaces, Anopheles culicifaces that transmit, just a second, that transmit this rural disease and Anopheles stephensis that transmits urban disease. So for urban and rural, Although the species is Anopheles, but subspecies Anopheles stephensi, it is for urban stephensi. The words uh, it, it is like foreign foreign word stephensi. So for urban and Anopheles culicifaces, that is for rural. Uh, lifespan is 10 to 12 days after blood meal. Although mosquito is living for one month, but after blood meal, it can live for 10 to 12 days. Okay, so time of biting, whatever important points are there for UG level that I am discussing. So usually you know that mosquito bite during night. So for Anopheles mosquito, they bite during night. But there are also some day biter like Edis mosquito. So that is Edis mosquito is the vector of dengue and chikungunya. They bite during daytime also. So we have to take care of the mosquito control measures all the time. 
it is not so that uh, only during night if we take care of the mosquito control measure if we if only during night uh, we apply odomos or uh, switch on that all out so uh, at night time you will get protection but during day time also you you may have the chances of uh, a mosquito bite from edis so you have to take care precautions of the mosquito control measures all the day uh, throughout the day during night and time Uh, mode of transmission vector transmission is through mosquito bite we have we already dis, uh, discussed direct transmission blood or plasma and congenital malaria see one of the thing is there resistance insecticide so that can be one of the factor for transmission as you know that one of the insecticide is ddt that is dichloro diphenyl trichloroethane so ddt is uh, since many decades since two decades almost Uh, mosquito become have become resistant just to, because of this resistance development <coughs> there cannot be uh, effective mosquito control measure if you have ddt so in place of the ddt one um, uh, that alpha cypermethrin it is also used as indoor residual spray as a mosquito control measure incubation period for plasmodium vivax is 8 to 17 days and for plasmodium malaria 18 to 40 days and uh, for plasmodium falciparum 9 to 14 days ols 16 to 18 days no need to remember all this specifically you can remember for vivax plasmodium vivax 8 to 17 days and falciparum 9 to 14 days or you can remember average incubation period of this vivax and falciparum that can be 10 to 15 days common you remember 10 to 15 days incubation period as common so now write down in chat box what do you mean by incubation period what is incubation period write down in chat box what is incubation period i am waiting for your reply what is incubation period we have also discussed previously in previous class about incubation period as you know that here incubation period is around 15 days in case of the malaria okay so write down in chat box what is incubation period meanwhile we are moving further so i am waiting for your reply what is incubation period and meanwhile we will further we are see clinical features looking at the clinical feature of the malaria there is cold stage hot stage and sweating stage okay so sakti is replying incubation period is the time when first symptom of the disease appear very right but something is missing it is not exact definition you have your concept is right so what is incubation period others can also reply okay pranal is replying period of period of time between infection and symptom onset some were right but not it is exact i am waiting for reply okay so clinical feature include cold stage hot stage and sweating stage uh so again another reply is that period between infection and production of the symptom tanvi is replying cold stage cold stage so we are talking about the symptoms of the disease so cold stage include symptoms of malaria lassitude headache nausea chills so here patient overall feels cold first of all during the development of the malaria patient overall fall feel cold in form of the rigor cold skin A rapid will pulse then hot stage it includes development of the uh, fever here the hot skin so fever first of all cold stage it is followed by hot stage here fever hot skin headache rapid respiration and after that there is sweating profuse sweating see in case of the malaria in case of the malaria there is intermittent fever so fever is because of the release of the myrozoites into the blood release of the myrozoites into the blood from plasmodia so Uh, one day there will you will experience fever it will be followed by a febrile stage a febrile means there is no fever and another day again there is fever so this typical feature is seen in case of the malaria so how you how to diagnose this malaria that is by demonstration of the parasite in blood so any person if he is having fever previously the guideline was there before 2013 that if any person is there Uh, with fever who comes in opd with fever they may be suspected as of having malaria until proved otherwise means uh, all the patients should 
your keywords should be sent for this uh, peripheral smear examination. In peripheral smear examination, uh, there is the demonstration of the plasmodium parasite. Plasmodium parasites are visible in peripheral smear. So for peripheral smear, there are two types of the film, thick film and thin film. Thick smear and thin smear. So thick uh, film is for searching of the parasite. Blood is spread in thick manner. Whenever we are preparing any food, so we apply thick, uh, somewhat thick and thin. You see, like in case of the dosa, thick dosa and thin dosa. Paper dosa is thin dosa. So for thin dosa or thin film is to identify the species. Here only in thick film we can search parasite, whether the parasite is present or not, that we can search in case of thick film. In case of the thin film, which parasite is there, whether it is plasmodium myvex, whether it is plasmodium falciparum, plasmodium malaria, or ovale, that can be searched in case of the thin film, obviously. There is fluorescent antibody test, uh, which is used for epidemiological study. There is a deep stick assay for plasmodium parasite. And apart from this, there is rapid diagnostic test. RDT, rapid diagnostic test, which is available since many years, which is also being used in field. So uh, only uh, we need not we need not to identify. I mean to say, we need not to uh, have the microscope for the rapid diagnostic test. We can easily identify with the help of the blood. That is like just pregnancy test whether any person is having plasmodium falciparum or vivex. And there are two, three lines. One is control line. One is this antigen for this uh, plasmodium vivex and one is containing antigen for plasmodium uh, uh, falciparum. So if uh, control line is positive and for the line uh, which is positive for plasmodium vivex, then we may consider that person is suffering from plasmodium vivex malaria. For control of the malaria, we have to manage the cases by giving which drug is useful for malaria control. Write down in chat box which drug is useful for malaria control. I am uh, waiting for your reply. Meanwhile, for previous question, incubation period, the uh, Sushti is replying period between exposure to infection and appearance of the first symptom. Okay, so very right. So I will correct it. Uh, that is the time interval between entry of organism and development of first sign and symptom. It is known as uh, incubation period. Again, I repeat, time interval between entry of the organism and development of first sign and symptom. Meanwhile, I am getting the answer of the name of the drug. Uh, chloroquine. Yes, very right. Hardik is replying. Arpit, Hirali. Some have written or uh, quinine. Quinine is also there, but most commonly used is chloroquine. Okay, so for control of this malaria. We have to manage the cases. We are we are giving chloroquine as a drug. Active intervention measure uh, is required. Active intervention measure measures in case of the uh, source reduction, in case of the environmental sanitation, in case of using personal protective equipment, personal protective measures like using mosquito net, like using insecticide treated mosquito net. That is uh, all I have discussed in case of the mosquito control measure in my uploaded video lecture. So disease control strategy, gas detection and treatment. Uh, so chloroquine, we have already discussed about this drug. We are not going to, into the detail of the dose. So chloroquine on day one, uh, 600 milligram, day two, 600 milligram followed by 300 milligram, not in detail. Quinine is also there, artemisinin, primaquine. These are some of the other drugs you can remember. Primaquine, artemisinin derivative. Artemisinin derivative include artesunate, artemether, arteether. Uh, in case of the chloroquine resistance malaria, sulfadoxin and pyrimethamine can be given. Even this artesunate can be also given. See, so this is all about pharmacology. So, uh, these are some of the photographs. You can see this is rapid antibody test. Here it is rapid antibody test. Okay, uh, these are the drugs, some pictures of the drugs. Doxycycline can be also useful. So all this is about drugs that you will learn in case of uh, medicine. I'm not going into the detail of the drugs right now. In in uh, BSM, we are more concerned about the epidemiology and prevention and control. So vector control strategy include anti-adult measure that is residual spray, indoor residual spray, which can which may be using the DDT or Melathion DDT. As you know that uh, DDT uh, against DDT, mosquito will become resistant. So um, alpha cypermethrin is used as an anti-adult measure. Then spray spray. Uh, it may be see here. It is indoor residual spray means it is being spread inside the house and spray spray that is spread into the atmosphere. 
So that is difference between residual spray and spray spray. So detail of all this I have been discussed in detail in my previous lecture, which is already uploaded on this uh, Monday. So in spray spray, pyrethrum insecticide is used genetic control in form of this uh, uh, chromosomal translocation, sterile male technique that is also been discussed. This is the photograph of indoor residual spray. A person is having pump. See, you can see that pump is there with this help with the help of this pump person is spraying over the wall anti-larval measures include elimination of the breeding places see we, that is the most effective measure for control of the malaria eliminate all the breeding places eliminate all uh, collection water collection eliminate all this collection water collection that is the most effective measure uh, management of the water level chemical control include the application of the larvae uh, uh, larvicidal agent like Paris Green, biological control that is application of this Gambusia and Levister as well as Guppy Fish. In Gujarat, commonly we are using Guppy Fish. What this Guppy Fish do? They eat up all the larvae which are present into the water body. So these are some of the photograph of mosquito breeding areas. Protection against mosquito net, using mosquito net, screening of the house. Uh, you, we, you may have experienced that we are applying some screens over the uh, window to prevent the entry of mosquito that is called a screening of the house using mosquito repellent this coil as well as this plug plug device which is containing one liquid and in this liquid there is one content that is called transfluothrin transfluothrin is present in our all out uh, device all out or any other brand so this is uh, the liquid composition which is known as mosquito repellent this coil this agarbati is also mosquito repellent Malarial vaccine, again, uh, malarial vaccine is in trials since so many years. No effective vaccine is available against malaria. Some of the uh, vaccines, SFP, uh, SPF 66 and PFS 25, they are since in trial, so for instance, many days, many years. Measurement of the malaria, how we, how we uh, measure the malarial uh, density, see, uh, with the help of the spleen rate, average annular spleen, parasitic rate, parasite density index, infant parasite rate. See, these are the indicators. Just you can remember the name of these indicators that uh, through which we can measure the density of the malaria. Means in how much proportion malaria is present in our country. Uh, most commonly effective this uh, indicator is infant parasite rate or proportional case rate. Then another ex example is uh, eradication error. In, see, that was in pre-eradication era. This is now eradication era. Although malaria is not eradicated, but it may be considered as eradication area here. Annual parasite in incidence, API, API and EBER. I am going to discuss this in two, uh, uh, these two indicators in detail. API is annual parasite index. So what does it mean? Confirm cases during one year divided by population under survey into 1000 suppose in rajkot city population under surveillance is 18 lakh it, and among this 18 lakh population so here population under surveillance what will we be write down 18 lakh and confirmed cases during one year are suppose 5000 so 5000 divided by 18 lakh into 1000 this is annual parasite incidence api so again i repeat api is confirmed cases during one year and population under surveillance that is in denominator multiplied by 1000 now second index annual blood examination rate see you can understand all these things from the name itself annual blood examination rate means during one year how much blood how many number of the blood slide have been examined for malaria so it's annual ever it is considered as ever annual blood examination rate number of slides divided by population See, if you are after passing your uh, graduation, if you, if you are working in uh, this PHC as an IUS medical officer, you will frequently come across this EBER and API. Most commonly, this EBER. You have to uh, give review in uh, review meeting. You have to answer the question that how much EBER is there in your PHC area or in your sub center area, and you have to reply this. So, number of slides examined, number of slides examined during uh, this. Uh, Number of slides examined during uh, one year among the population. Suppose in PHC area, population is 30,000, and out of this 30,000 population during one year, uh, 
your PLC is examined in 5000 slide. So 5000 divided by 30,000 into 100. Whatever answer is there, it will be considered as annual blood examination rate. This is noise of uh, this fighter plan. Fighter plan is there in Jamnagar city. So they are having their test, testing every day. Annual calciferum incidence, then vectors indices include human blood index, porozoid rate, mosquito density, man biting rate. This you can remember the name. Only remember the formula in detail. National anti malaria program that was started in 1953 in 19, uh, but nowadays it is not national anti malaria program since many years it has been um, it has been merged into national vector borne disease control program NBBDCP under which apart from malaria, dengue, chikungunya, all the, this diseases are included in national vector borne disease control program. Previously this was national anti malaria program and it has been uh, the name of this national anti malaria program has been changed so many times. I am not going to discuss about this National anti malaria program right now. Uh, I am going to share another presentation. Our lecture is not over. Uh, see, we are going to see the uh, malaria epidemiology. We, we have already discussed about malaria causes, but malaria epidemiology, we, are, we have to see it again. So that is in discuss because in your exam, epidemiology is also asked in detail. So I am going to discuss this malaria epidemiology. Okay, I am sharing that presentation. You, now you can see that malaria epidemiology. Right? So at present about 100 countries are considered to be affected by this disease. More than 100 countries of course. Uh, worldwide incidence of this is 300 to 500 million cases per year. And 90% of these cases are in Sub-Saharan Africa. So India, India and Africa. Africa is the leading uh, country in which malaria is prevalent. After that, in Asia, India is also the country where malaria is more prevalent. I'm not going to discuss this graph. Uh, most of the death of the uh, in world occurred under five years of the age. Um, cerebral malaria and anemia are the main cause of death. In case of the malaria, anemia and cerebral malaria, if malaria is affecting our brain, it is cerebral malaria, particularly it happens in case of the plasmodium falciparum. So these are the most common causes of death. Urban and peri-urban malaria are on the rise in South Asia and many of the Africa. So because of the urbanization, urban malaria is also on rise. Previously, malaria was present in rural area. But in, because of the urbanization, because of the water collection in industry, in uh, uh, construction site, urban malaria is also on rising. So. Agent factor we already discussed. Plasmodium vivax is the most common. See, so this is again a graph to show you. Plasmodium vivax is the most common agent to, uh, for this malaria, followed by plasmodium falciparum. A small amount is transmitted by plasmodium falcip malaria and makes infection. So, urban malaria, it contributes to 80% of cases nowadays. Malaria in construction and development, I already told about border malaria that is in border area and border belt area. Uh, see, this is the life cycle of the mosquito uh, as well as um, development of the uh, plasmodium in mosquito and development into the human. So, I am going to read this. See, uh, this in mosquito it is exogenous phase. In mosquito, development of the malaria is I think you are able to see the slide fully. Yes, okay. So, this is exogenous phase. So from sporozoites uh, in saliva, the sporozoites are there in saliva of the mosquito. When this mosquito bite, that is erythrocytic multiplication into the human. So there will be formation of first of all merozoites. Merozoite enter the red blood cell. Merozoite enter the RBC. Into that there will be development of the ring trophozoites. Then mature trophozoite. Then cyzone. So first of all there will be merozoites then ring proposoids, then cyzones. Okay, so there will be mature cyzone. And again, these cyzones will release mirozoid. The cyzones contain mirozoid. So it will be released in form of, uh, when, whenever the cyzones break, they will release mirozoids. Then uh, some of the ring proposoids develop into the gametes. There will be micro gametes or macro gametes. So these gametes will be again 
whenever the mosquito bite is there this gamete will enter into the mosquito so again i repeat after mosquito bite mosquito bite there will be formation of the merozoids merozoid will enter into the rbc and it will form cyzoids sorry trophozoids so first of all there will be ring trophozoids see in peripheral smear of the mosquito uh, say plasmodium falciparum in peripheral smear of the uh, any person who is suffering from fever uh, commonly lab technician identify this ring trophozoids ring ring trophozoid is identified into peripheral smear so ring trophozoid will develop into tro mature trophozoid then immature cyzoid and this is mature cyzoid mature cyzoid is containing so many merozoids some of the ring trophozoid will form gametes whenever there is again mosquito bite this gametes will enter into the mosquito and there will be formation there will be fertilization of this microgamete and macrogamete inside the mosquito formation of zygote so because of the fertilization so fertilization occurs in case of the uh, mosquito there will be formation of the zygote zygote will form okinate okinate will uh, it will penetrate into the outer layer of the stomach wall of the mosquito and formation of the oocyst okinate then oocyst see so we are talking about the development inside mosquito and this oocyst will form sporozoid so sporozoid will come into the saliva of the mosquito whenever there is mosquito bite this sporozoid will be and will enter into the human so the phase into the mosquito development of the mosquito is known as sporogony in the phase uh, of the development of this plasmodia inside the human it is known as cytogony sporogony and cytogony so host factor we already know i am not going to repeat all these things whatever new things is there that i am going to discuss so 60% human relative humidity is required for the survival of the mosquito whatever new things are that that i am going to discuss so this is deep stick method already covered all the things i have already covered i think so uh, i think we will uh, end discussion we will end this malaria today so uh, any questions from your side write down any questions in chat box any questions in please write down in chat box i will uh, give you one google form link into our group and you have to answer uh, the questions based on for today's lecture as well as lecture on anti malarial activity means anti malarial month activity as well as mosquito control measures mosquito control measure part 1 so many questions will be mosquito control measures part 1 and some questions will be based on today's lecture so uh, let me ask some questions to you uh, different vectors of malaria do you know vectors of malaria do you know what are the different vectors write down in chat box what are the different vectors of malaria you that you know write down in chat box names of vector what are different different vector of malaria you know write down in chat box i am waiting for your reply what are different vectors of malaria you know different species i have discussed okay plasmodium vivax arpit is replying apart from plasmodium vivax only one plasmodium vivax which are other vectors only one reply plasmodium falciparum hidal is replying yes hers par sorry par plasmodium vivax falciparum malari and ovale what is the diagnosis of the di diagnostic test how will you diagnose any person is having malaria how will you diagnose what is the diagnostic test what is investigation i am not talking about symptom what is the investigation of malaria okay you can write down symptoms also write down symptoms also what is the investigation of malaria i am getting reply for previous question and plasmodium falciparum from sakti bhansri is replying okay well the rtt 
and it is rapid diagnostic test very right okay not ddt test or with at is rdt rapid diagnostic test okay apart from okay mp test yes was donald trump some somebody has uh, written this their name as donald trump it is mp test so psmp what we rather call psmp psmp is peripheral smear for malaria parasite yes i have getting reply from so many students i am not going to uh, name them okay what are the symptoms of malaria what are the symptoms of malaria rather you can write down the phases of malarial symptoms i have mentioned two phases rather three phases also so what are the symptoms of malaria in previous question so many students have replied amisha rutvi harsh apeksha hidali hardik they have replied okay hardik is replying chills fever low blood pressure did i mention low blood pressure headache perspiration okay what are symptoms of malaria what are the stages stages of malaria symptom cold fever okay restitute nausea donald trump is again replying seeking juice that can range from moderate to severe high fever profuse sweating headache nausea vomiting abdominal pain diarrhea janke is replying chill it's wet okay parth intermittent fever chill stage hot stage sweat stage hardik is replying cold hot and sweating west is replying uh, cold hot sweat darsali chill it sweat Okay, so your answers are very right. Okay, do you remember what is A B E R? A B E R, ever. What is full form of ever? Do you remember what is full form of ever? Ankita, <coughs> cold, hot, sweat, 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 nil, coldness, then shivering, then nausea and vomiting. Okay, what is A B E R? What is ever? Reply me in chat box. What is ever? <coughs> full form of ever if you remember what is full form of ever a b e r yes annual blood examination rate your answer is very right annual blood examination rate okay now what is what do you mean by annual blood examination rate what is annual blood examination rate not uh, area blood examination rate yes your uh, full form is correct now reply me what do you mean by annual blood examination rate what do you mean by annual blood examination rate what is meaning of annual blood examination rate i am getting reply from okay blood yes amisha is replying blood slide plus population number okay your answer is correct so in in uh, one year how many percentage of the slides have been examined means annual number of blood slide examined divided by population into 100 that is annual blood examination rate okay ever is measure of the diagnosis it is measure of your surveillance not diagnosis it is the measure of surveillance in in your area whenever your annual blood examination rate is good enough then your surveillance activity are being proper so blood number divided by population number into 100 rangani uh, shivani is shivangi uh, is replying ruthvi is also replied correctly okay now uh, last question write down the control measures how do you control malaria how do you control any mosquito borne disease write down control measure this is very general question write down the control measure how do you control malaria how do you control malaria so many measures are there to control malaria clean the area or it is applying clean the area then 
see one one more thing you we need to understand that uh, breeding places of the mosquito are water so we have to clean we have to eliminate the water sources simply uh, cleaning all these things means uh, simply cleaning your dust will not eliminate malaria mosquito net munish is replying people playing clean area brian uh, brian siva anti larval measures anti adult measures very nice kill mosquito wala is replying then bath use creams repellent ddt spray okay ddt yes you know that uh, mosquito have become resistant to ddt so i have mentioned one more uh, chemical apart from ddt uh, you may be remembering but even if you don't remember it is there in my previous uh, lecture you can find out it from screening okay screen the houses these are vector management bargo chaya then uh, rutvi parth sakti screen our houses which common repellent do you use which common repellent do you use hca jiral is replying hca what do you mean by hca what is full form of hca use of mosquito repellent on exposed skin dafshali which which common mosquito repellent do you use mosquito use of mosquito repellent on exposed skin brc uh, biological method like puppy fish composition based very nice again matter plant this is use of matter plant which common mosquito repellent do you use do you know you may be applying over the skin you apply over the skin that repellent all out is also one of the repellent yes it contains transfluorothrin one repellent you apply over the skin odomas yes it may be, it is containing mostly n uh, methyl toluidamide odomas we whenever we are using any chemical we are using any drug we have to now develop the habit of watching the content of that chemical odomas long sleeve clothes is it is playing long sleeve hca is hexachlorocycloexam perhaps you have googled hirali yes very nice we need to learn by any mode see learning by google learning by youtube all are good at least only our intention is to learn new learn something which is useful for our professional career as well as for our development so any mean, means of learning are good okay so we will end here today and i will uh, give you the mcq in google form you we'll have to attend and in google form itself you will see the results right so 10 mcqs will be there i will uh, ask you in google in form of the google form and send in your group okay thank you very much